a very good morning today we will discuss about different types of insect legs and their modification as well as different types of insect wings and their modification first we will discuss about different types of insect legs and their modification the different types of so this is the insect leg so three pairs of insect leg is there so which are pairs mesothorax and metathorax Okay, one minute. Very good now. Okay, so there are three insect legs, so which are present on so, meso and meta. These three pairs of legs are also different. Class insect. Exapoda. So exa means so six legs. So poda means legs are four. So six types of legs. So that's what we want to call it. Exapoda. The name. So insect are two types of things. So two types of things we will discuss later, which is present on mis on metathorax. First we will discuss about legs only. So three types of legs. So we shall present on pro, meso, and metathorax. So that's why we want to call it hexapoda. Hexapoda. This is the hexapoda. So three pairs of legs is there. So first we will discuss five parts. So it consists of five parts. Those are Coxa, Procanter, Femur, Tibia, Tarsus, Three Tarsus. One minute, what happened? Why is not clear? Okay. So it consists of five parts. So five parts of insect legs. Those are coxa, procanter, femur, tibia, tarsus. So coxa, procanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. So first we will discuss about coxa. So what is meant by coxa? So it is the first insect leg. So insect leg consists of five parts. Those are coxa, procanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. So first part. First part of insect leg is coxa, so because it can articulate with the thoracic region, so the thoracic regions of pleural. So in case of a dorsal, we want to call it a tergum. So ventral, we want to call it sternum. So lateral part, we want to call it pleural. So in case of thoracic region, pleural region, so it can articulate with the body. So coxa, it can. Articulate with thoracic pleural region, so it will not attach to the tergal region. So only it can connect to pleural region, so means lateral side. So you want to call it pleural. So that's why it will connect to the thoracic pleural. So thoracic pleural. It, it, it look like triangle. So can see a triangle. So it look like a dragon face. Like so in case of Podonata on family, it's an ichthyomonid. So in case of ichthyomonid family and dragonflies and Podonata. So in case of Podonata and ichthyomonid. 
humanoid family so this procanser is two segmented actually one segment the exception is there one exception is there in case of odonata and ignomonid bat so in case of these insects two pairs of procanser is divided into two segments in case of dragon fly damper fly as well as ignomonid bat okay it is the second segment So next, let's go on another segment, third segment of insect legs. So that is called as the femur. So third segment, third segment of insect leg is femur. One minute, what happened? Is it audible now? Yes, sir. Okay. In case of insect leg, it consists of five parts. Those are coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. So we already discussed about coxa, trochanter. Trochanter it is a second segment of insect leg. So it consists of two parts. In case of odonata, dragonflies, and ichneumonidae. So in case of these three insects, the trochanter is two segmented trochanter. So but in case of remaining insects, only one segment is there. In case of trochanter. Okay, next femur. So it is the third part, the third part of insect leg. So it is the largest and the stoutest part of the insect leg. And remember this point. So in case of ICR examination, so they will ask this type of bit only. So which one of the following is the longest and stoutest part of the insect leg? So only femur. So it is the largest and the stoutest part of the insect leg. Okay. So next femur. Next tibia. Next one tibia. So it is the long and provided with downward projecting spines. So in case of spines, so in case of this tibia, spines is there. So spines which is immobile, immobile. Okay, spur it is immobile, but spines which is immobile, non-mobile in the sense non-mobile. So these spines which are present on tibial regions. So tibial regions only. So in case of some insects, spur is also there, which is present in tibial regions. So spines and spurs, which are present on tibial regions. So next, the tarsus. So next one, tarsus. So fifth segment, again divided into sub types. So one to five sub types is there. So first one we want to call as the basic tarsus. You can see here. So this first segment we want to call as basic tarsus. So basic tarsus. So this is longer or largest than the remaining four segments. So in case of these tarsal region, five segments is there. So among those five segments, basic tarsus is the largest and longest. So basic tarsus. So next one. So beyond the these tarsus or at the end of these tars three tarsus is there. So at the end of tarsus, three tarsus is there. So you can see here. So this is the three tarsus. So at the end of these three tarsus, say a pair of claws, say a pair of claws or nails. So in case of a human being's language, we want to call as a nail. Nails. But in case of entomology point of view, we want to call as angus. So we can also call as angus. Angus the claws. So in between these claws, say median pad is there. So we. want to call as arolium 
so which which is present in odonata odonata means the dragon flies but which is absent in the dipterans so this aroleum is absent in dipterans so which is present in ardoptorans so like grasshoppers grasshoppers ardoptorans they contain so this aroleum so but this aroleum which is absent in the dipterans so in case of dipterans embodium so in case of dipterans embodium is there so aroleum so which is present in ardoptorans so means grasshoppers but this aroleum is absent in the order dipterans so dipterans they contain the embodium you can remember these two points what is meant by aroleum what is meant by embodium embodium so aroleum is absent in dipterans embodium it is present in the dipterans so you can see here so we already discussed these points so coxa so insect leg it consists of five parts those are coxa procanter femur tibia and tarsus so coxa means so it is the first segment of insect leg so it can articulate to the thoracic region so in case of thoracic region so dorsal we want to call as a tergum so ventral we want to call as a sternum lateral we want to call as a pleural so in this pleural region of the thoracic region so in the pleura of thoracic region so these folds are will articulate so these folds folds is the insect leg part insect leg part okay so next one trochanter so trochanter so it is a very small and second segment so second segment it look like triangle so it is divided into two segments so in case of odonatum the femur so it is the largest and strongest term. strongest or stoutest whatever it may be so you can remember the femur part so next tibia so in case of spurs and spines so which are distributed on this tibial region so the so next tarsus so which is the largest segment of the insect leg so which is usually divided into sub tarsomers so those are one to five segments is there so among those five segments the first segment which is the largest one so big or broad so that's why we want to call as basi tarsus so basi tarsus so the basic coxite so these basic tarsus are basic coxite in the sense coxa so which is the large neuropterans or that as well as lepidopteran order so so together we want to call as a miron so this basic coxite which is the large in neuropteran and lepidopteran so that's why we want to call as a miron so that's why we want to call as miron miron so these tarsus so at the end of these tarsus the pre tarsus is there so in the end of the tarsus pre tarsus is there So which consists of a pair of claws, so a pair of claws or angus, so whatever it may be, so those are same only. Claws, nothing but angus. So in case of human being, we want to call as a nail, so nails. But in case of this entomology point of view, we want to call as a claws. Okay. So in between the claws, there is a lobe-like structure we want to call as the aroleum, so which is present in ardoptorans. So in case of grasshoppers, ardoptorans, aroleum is there. so which is absent in dipterans so which is absent in dipterans so, but in case of dipterans embodium is there so aroleum is different embodium is different embodium is different so which will come under wings so embodium which will come under wings aroleum and embodium which is present in leg part you can remember these two points also. because in case of ic examination so they will confuse the, this type of terminology sarolium and embodium which is belongs to leg part embodium which is related to insect wing part embodium okay so next one modifications of insect leg so so different types of modifications is there so those are called sorial sambulatorial cursorial posterior sticking leg natatorial conforaging leg so, so different types of modifications is there so different types of modifications of insect leg system so we will discuss now so you can see here modifications of legs in different insects so
Next one, modifications of legs in different insects. So modifications of legs in different insects. The so first one, ambulator. So ambulatory type of modification. Cursorial type of modification. Saltatorial type of modification. Posorial. So posorial, it means a digging purpose. Raptorial type. Different types of modifications. So the ambulator. So ambulatory means in case of front legs and middle legs. So in case of front legs and middle legs, so which is useful for walking purpose. So front and middle legs, which are mainly useful for walk purpose. The best example is the wheels, so they can move them. So they will not run, just they can move. So means walking. So like that only vast, like that only grass of person. So grass of person. So yes, of grass also, different types of modifications is there. Two types of modifications is there in case of grass also. So first one, ambulatory. So in case of front legs and middle legs, they can modify it for walking purpose. But in case of hind legs, so they can modify it for purpose. So that's why in case of grass, two types of modifications. So those are ambulatory and saltatory. So but in case of blister beetles, so only One type is there, that is the ambulatory type of modification. So in case of ambulatory means walking purpose. Here. So in case of cockroaches, so they can running them, so running purpose. So they can run with the help of three pairs of legs. So all legs they can modify it into running purpose. So running purpose. So examples cockroaches, you can remember the PC cockroach. So cursorial starts with the C letter. So like that only cockroaches. So next to saltatorials. Saltatorial. So it means in case of grasshopper. So hind legs they can modify. It. So for jumping purpose. So hind legs they can modify it for jumping purpose. So if you observe any grasshopper, then you can get an idea. Because they can jump from one place to another place. But in case of front legs and middle legs, so just for walking purpose. So in case of grasshoppers. So like that only posterior, so posterior. So in case of mole crickets and down rollers, so front legs they can modify them, so they can useful for digging purpose. In case of mole crickets, so in case of mole crickets, so the tibial and tarsus regions. So five parts of insect leg is there: coxa, trochanter, femur, tibia, and tarsus. So only tibia and tarsus regions, so which is a short and broad. Arm. So they can modify it like a teeth-like projection. They can modify it into teeth-like projection. So in the tympanum, tympanum, so which is a present in the four tibia only. So in case of fossorial, so in case of fossorial type of insect like tympanum means auditory organ. So tympanum, which is the present in four tibia only. So in case of fossorial. So here basic tarsus is there. So the first Two segments of the tarsus. So only tarsal means the tibial and tarsal regions. So they can modify them. So only tibial and tarsal regions. The first two segments of the tarsus, so which produce in the strong spine. So Look like uh, knife arm. It look like knife I means spines. It look like spines. So stronger spines. So remaining.
okay you can see here you can see here so in case of approaches pastoral type of lex is okay, useful for running buffers so running buffers so like that only graph to you can see here hind legs the so front legs middle legs so which are useful for walking purpose but in case of hind so which are useful for jumping purpose so jumping or keeping purpose so graph to just you can remember the examples from so posterior means it contain the mole cricket that's it just to can remember modification power so mole cricket examples posterior so posterior type of modifications of like so it contain the mole cricket so like that only raptorial type of insect so it means mantids praying mantids so raptorial type of insect like which are present in the praying mantids so next one natatorial natatorial means swimming so this type of insect like which are useful for swimming purpose so in case of water beetles and water bugs so hind legs they can modified into natatorial type of insect legs like, so which are present in water bugs and water bugs and water beetles so which are mainly useful for swimming purpose so next to scansoria so scanning in the sense all legs like, so in case of head gloves so can remember this point in case of head gloves so scansorial type of insect legs like, exist there insect legs like, exist there so which are present in head legs so which are mainly useful for clinging them so it can clinging our head so with the help of these legs only it can cling our head some so which are present in head gloves so next one prehensile so basket like so prehensile we can also call as basket like so in case of these basket are prehensile so which are present in the dragon flies only so predator sum so in case of predator so it can dragon flies is also one of the predator so one of the predator dragon flies so it can feed on some insects sum so those are an aerial insect so all legs they can modified into prehensile so basket type sum so it can form the basket type so it can form the basket type so that's why we want to call as basket like legs so so these three pairs of legs they can modify into basket so they can form into bucket while feeding just to remember the examples so you can see here so in case of water bug and water beetles so natatorial type of insect like sister natatorial means mainly useful for swimming purpose so you can see here it's look like So next, sticking legs. Some sticking legs. Scansorial, which is a present in the scansorial, so which is a present in the head gloves. So sticking legs, which are present in the house flies. Sticking legs, which are present in the house flies. So you can see here. So here the all the three pairs of legs. So they can modify it for sticking purpose only. so sticking legs which are present in the house flies so scansorial which is a present in the head gloves don't confuse next clasping legs so clasping legs some so which are present in the four legs of the male water beetle only so in case of icr examination so, so sometimes they will reverse them so four legs of female water beetles don't confuse only four legs of male water beetles so clasping legs which are present in four legs of male water beetles so like that only footed legs some so foot it look like our foot so which is a present in thrips you can remember this point so footed type of legs which are present in thrips some so last one prolex prolex so prolex we can also call as false leg pseudo leg or abdominal leg some so whatever it may be same only prolex 
or false or pseudo legs or abdominal legs the caterpillar so in case of abdomen so third fourth fifth sixth and last abdominal segments are present them so in case of caterpillar so third fourth fifth sixth and last abdominal segments are present but in case of semi loopers you can remember this point so in case of semi loopers third and fourth abdominal segments are absent third and fourth abdominal segments are absent third and fourth the remaining fifth sixth and last abdominal segments are present in case of semi loopers so but in case of loopers third fourth fifth abdominal segments are absent only sixth and last abdominal segments are absent so you can remember this point it's a very very important point in case of semi loopers third fourth abdominal segments are absent fifth sixth and last abdominal segments are present but in case of loopers third fourth fifth abdominal segments are absent sixth and last abdominal segments are present thank you so eight pairs of abdominal legs is there so only abdominal legs eight pairs but true legs or thoracic legs we can also call as true legs but abdominal legs we want to call as false leg or pro leg or pseudo leg so thoracic leg three pairs but in case of abdominal legs it will vary one species to one species so that's why we want to call it false leg false leg or pseudo leg okay so only abdominal segments it will vary from species to species so you can remember one point master of life is apalia lesions proxima so in case of those insects eight pairs of abdominal legs is there only eight pairs of abdominal legs but thoracic three pairs is there so total number of segments total number of legs in case of mustard supply is 11 pairs so don't confuse abdominal eight pairs thoracic three pairs so total 11 pairs so next one modifications modification in anisism so in case of different types of front legs they can modify for cleaning of antenna middle legs it can be useful for waxing for picking up wax plates so generally these wax plates which are present on 4 to 7 abdominal segments 4 to 7 fourth fifth sixth seventh four pairs of wax plates is there four pairs of wax plates which are present on 4 fifth sixth and seventh abdominal segments so which are present on the honey bees so four pairs of wax plates which are present on honey bees some abdomen of the honey bees which are present on Fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh abdominal segments. So, okay, so antenna, so front legs. So, in case of honey bees, so front legs, so it consists of three parts. Those are eye brush, antenna cleaner, and pollen brush. So, eye brush means it can clean the antenna. Eye is some compound eyes. So, it can clean the compound eyes. So, that's why we want to call it the eye brush. So, like that only antenna cleaner is there. So, like that only antenna cleaner. So it means it can clean the antenna. So we can it consists of two parts. Those are velum and antenna. so velum is different, antenna comb is different. So velum in the sense it consists of a mobile clasp, so which is a present on the tibial end of the tibial means in the sense distal end of the tibia, so the end of tibia. So velum is present. So next one antenna comb. So it can antenna comb means it can clean antenna so semi circular notch is there so which is a present on the tibia which is a present on the tibia so with the help of this antenna comb and vellum so it can clean the antenna so insect means honey bees it can clean the antenna so next one pollen brush pollen brush is there so in the sense bristles on the basic torso so you can remember this point So bristles on the basic torso, so which can form the pollen brush, so which is a present in the front leg. So front leg it has three parts. Those are 
eye brush antenna cleaner volume brush so eye brush means it can clean the compound isomer so eye means compound isomer so antenna cleaner it consists of two parts those are vellum and antennal comb so vellum is the mobile class which is present in the distal end of the tibia so like that only antennal comb is there so semi circular notch so which is aligned with the spine so next it can clean the antenna so like that only pollen brush is there so bristles on the basic tossus so which can form the pollen brush so which is mainly useful for the collection of pollen from the head and antenna so in case of front legs which is a present term front legs which is near to the head so that's why it can collect the pollen any pollen so it can clean the head region only. okay next middle legs so it consists of two parts so those are pollen brush and tibial spurs so in case of middle legs it consists of pollen brush and tibial spurs so pollen brush means here it hides from the basic tarsal so in the sense in case of a front legs of honey bee so pollen brush is there so there are bristles of the basic tarsal they can form the pollen brush but in case of middle legs a funny base the pollen brush means stiff hairs on basic tarsus so they can form the pollen brush stiff hairs of the basic tarsus they can form the pollen brush so which is mainly useful for collection of pollen from the middle part of the body so front means in from the head region front legs so like that only in case of middle regions so these middle legs so middle region so middle legs so hind legs remaining abdomen hind legs pollen brush is there pollen packer pollen comb okay next the tibial spur is there tibial spur which is the present in the middle legs only tibial spur so at the end of tibia so at the distal end of the tibia the mobile spur so which is a present on the middle leg only so which is useful for to loosen the pellets of pollen so from the pollen basket of hind legs so in case of pollen basket of hind legs pollen is there so from those pollen so with the help of these tibial spur so it will keep on comb them so with the help of tibial spur only so it will lose them so pollen packet in the sense pollen basket it kind of in the pollen so those pollen ultimately they want to keep on the comb so with the help of tibial spur so it will keep on the comb so next one in case of hind legs so third one hind legs So it consists of pollen basket, pollen comb, pollen packer, pollen basket, pollen comb, pollen packer. So this pollen basket, you can remember this point. We can also call as corbicula. Pollen basket, we can also call as corbiculum. So pollen basket, we can also call as corbicula. So the outer surface of the hind tibia, so which consists of the shallow cavity. so outer surface of the hind tibia so which contain the shallow cavity so next one pollen packer pollen packer pollen packer we can also call as the pollen pressum means it can press the pollen so it consists of a pector and auricle so it consists of two parts those the pector and auricle so pector in the sense of bristle some so it can consists of a row of bristles which is the present on the end of the tibia so distal end of the stem but in case of auricle so it means it is a fringed with hairs so it is a fringed with hairs at the basal end of the basic tarsus so at the end of a basal end of the basic tarsus it consists of hairs but in case of pectin so in case of pectin so bristles so at the end of a distal end of the tibia so bristles is there So and finally, last one, pollen packer. Pollen packer. Pollen packer. We can also call as a pollen press. Finally, pollen comb. So in case of ten rows of stiff spines which are present on the basic tarsus only. So ten rows of stiff spines which are present on the basic tarsus. Okay. That's all about the pollen comb, pollen packer, pollen basket. So in case of honey bees, so it's a very lengthy process. Very lengthy points is there. in case of honey bees so front legs they can useful for cleaning up the head region and antenna so middle legs it will it will useful for picking up wax plates and cleaning up the middle region so like that only hind legs 
so storage of the pollen so pollen basket pollen comb pollen pack research so majority purpose in case of icr examination so they will have got hind legs so because so with the help of these hind legs only so honey bees it can collect the pollen honey bees it will collect the pollen so okay basket type of legs which are present in the dragon fly so in case of honey bees the front legs is different middle legs is different and the hind legs is different so front legs means which is near to the head you can see here so which is near to the head so that's why it can clean the compound eyes antenna and remaining part of the head down so remaining part of the head so sometimes so pollen it will also this present on these head region so that's why with the help of pollen brush so pollen brush so with the help of pollen brush so it can clean the antenna so you can see here then you can get an idea so front legs which is near to the head so that's why it, it will clean the compound eyes antenna and head Because of poor signals. Mm. Okay. So you can see here. So in case of this middle leg, it will clean the middle part of the. Honeybee. So like that only in case of hind legs. So you apply. So nectar means with the help of mouth pots they will collect the Okay, that's all about insect legs. So let's move on another topic: insect wings. Insect wings. Another topic: insect wings. So you can see here how it looks like. It looks like triangles. So these insect wings, it looks like triangles. You can see in this picture. So like that only you can see this picture also. It looks like triangular. So it looks like triangles. So you can see here. we can see it look like triangles so insect wings it look like triangles so there are two pairs of insect wings so which are present on meso and metathorax so these meso and metathorax together we want to call as pterothorax so meso and met meta we want to call as pterothorax so in these pterothorax and meso and metathorax only so
So among invertebrate animals, so only insects possess the wing sum. So only insects, it consists of the wings. So based on the presence or absence of the wings, so the class insect, which is divided into two subclasses. So those are so eight ergots and pterygota. So those are eight ergots and pterygots. So based on the presence or absence of the wings only, it's a class insect, which is divided into two subclasses. Those are eight ergota and ergota. So in case of eight ergot, means wings are absent. So primitively wingless insects. So in case of eight ergot, so like that only in case of some ergot also wings are absent. So wings are absent in some ergot. So like in case of ectoparasites, so ectoparasites like head louses, head louses, poultry louse and the fleas, so which are Primarily winged, but secondarily wingless. So primarily winged, but secondarily wingless. In case of ectoparasites like Cephalocoleta, Mallophaga, head louse, poultry louse, and the fleas, so which are secondarily wingless. So like that only in case of some insects, so like social insects, the so wings are deciduous. So it means they can form two times. So deciduous in. Ants and termites, in case of social insects like ants and termites, the wings are deciduous. So it means in case of some primitive insects, so in case of ergots, the wings are absent. So like that only in case of ectoparasites, so we primitively wing them, but secondarily winglessness. So like that only in case of some insects, the wings are deciduous, like social insects, ants and termites. So just you can remember those points. So actually, two pairs of things which are present on meso and metathorax only. So prothorax it will not contain any type of insect wings. So okay. So next diagrammatic representation you can see here. So this is the insect wing. So you can see here. So it look like triangle. So you are you can see here also. It look like triangle. So triangle means so three margins. You can see here. one margin, second margin, third margin. So like that, only three angles: one one angle, second angle, and third angle. So you can see here. So it looks like three margins, three margins and three angles. You can see here: so costal margin, apical margin, anal margin. Costal margin, apical margin, anal margin. So costal, apical, anal. So like that, only three angles. Those are humeral angles, so which is the present at the Insect thorax, so thorax of insect, and then insect wing, so humeral angle. So next one, apical angle, which is a present in between costal and apical, so apical angle. So like that only, anal angle, which is the present in between apical and anal, anal angle. So next one, remigium. What is meant by remigium? So in case of anterior part of the insect wing. So only anterior part, you can see here. So this is the anterior part. And this is the posterior part. The anterior part of the insect wing we want to call as remigium. You can remember this point in the sense. So anterior means upper part of the wing. So which is the present towards the coastal margin. So coastal margin. So we want to call as remigium. So we want to call as remigium. And the posterior part of the insect wing. Posterior part. We want to call as a vanal area. So vanal. So you can see here. So this is the remigium part, and this is the vanal part. Anterior remigium. So I think in 2019 they asked for this term. So anterior part of the insect wing we want to call as remigium. So posterior part of the insect wing we want to call as vanal area. Vanal area. So which is called as a vanus. So which is called as a vanus in hind wings, clavus in the 
four wings. The clavus in the four wings. So you can see here four wings clavus, venous in the hind wings. So these clavus again uh, consists of a jugum and jugal fold. Is there. So jugal fold it can differentiate the clavus and the jugum. So jugal furrow. So these are the some terminology so which is uh, related into the insect wing. So vanal area and anterior remigium. So in case of four wings, we want to call as a clavus. So in case of fine wings, we want to call as vanism. So jugum means inner part, so just attached part, so which is attached to the insect wing. So jugal fold is there. It can differentiate from clavus. It can differentiate from the clavus. So you can see here, so three margins. So those are coastal, we can also call as anterior, so apical or outer, anal or inner. So outer in the sense apical, coastal in the sense anterior, channel in the sense inner. So like that only three angles, humeral angle, apical or outer angle, anal angle, we can also call as tornus. So you can remember this point, a tornus. Anal angle, we can also call as tornus. So in case of humeral angle, which is the present in between the body wall and the coastal margin. So which is a present in between body wall and the coastal margin. So humeral means which is attached to the body wall. So humeral angle. So between body wall and the coastal margin. So apical, which is a present in between coastal and apical margin. So like that only anal, so which is a present in the apical and the anal margin. So in case of anterior, anterior area we want to call as a remigium. In the posterior we want to call as analum, vanal area. So remigium means anterior part. So posterior we want to call as vanal area. So you can see here, posterior part of the wings we want to call as vanal area. So in the clavus which is a present in the four wings, vanus which is a present in hind wings. So in the jugum we can already discuss this point. So next one, longitudinal wings. What is meant by longitudinal wings? What is meant by cross wings? The name itself indicating the answer. Longitudinal means which can extend from the base of the wing to the margin. So from starting to end point. So that is called as a longitudinal wing. So it will be convex and concave. So you can remember these are two symbols. So convex in the sense, this side. And concave means upper. Okay, U. So inverted U means convex. Okay, U means concave. So next cross, it means interconnect them. So cross means, means so it can interconnect the two longitudinal wings. Okay, next another terminology, you can remember this point, semper strip. So what is meant by semper strip? So which is the degenerated tracheum. So tracheum, it will be degenerated. So in case of lepidopteran sphincter. So trachea means with the help of these trachea only, blood supply is there. So in, in case of insect wings also blood supply is there. So in case of these lepidopterans, so those trachea, so trachea are of center, are degenerated. So that's why we want to call as tempus strip. Okay, next androconia. What is meant by androconia? Androconia or androconia, whatever it may be, androconia. So group of specialized cells, it means they can secrete the centum. So they can secrete the sense. So which are mostly present on the upper surface of the wings. So upper surface of the wings of male butterflies only. So that's why we want to call as androconia. So group of specialized cells or sense scales. So which are present on only male butterflies only. So only male butterflies. So you can remember these two terminology also. Okay. Next hypothetical wing venation. So hypothetical wing venation. So you can see here, so this is the diagrammatic representation of insect wisdom. So if you observe under compound microscope, then you can get an idea. So costa is there, you can see here, costa, subcosta, radial, radial, median, cubitus, and annulum. So these are the insect wing parts. Those are costa. First one, costa. Second one, subcosta. Third one, radial. Me next, median. Uh, uh, next one, cubitus. So, and last one, analum. Annals. So, you can see here, costa. So, first you can see the costum. So, of course, I can see here, this is the coastal region. Next one, subcosta. So, you can see here, 
So this is the subcostal. So on the radial, it is again divided into two types. Okay, R1 and RS. RS means a radial sector. So you can see a radial sector again divided into two types. Those are the arthrom. So you can see R1 and R3 is there. So R1 means it consists of R2, R3. So R1 here it is the R1. Next one R2 and R3. So next R3 again divided into two types. Those are R4 and R5. So like that only median. So median anterior, median posterior. So median anterior again divided into two types. Those are median anterior one and median anterior two. So like that only median anterior posterior. So median posterior one, median posterior two, median posterior three, median posterior four. Next one cubitusum or CU. It can represent as CU. So CU one, CU two. So CU one again divided into two types. Those are CU one A, CU one B. So CU two is there. Okay, next anal three to four is there. Um, so one A, second A, third A. So first we will discuss about costa. So what is meant by costa? What is meant by costa? So costa it is the second anterior region of the venum. So it means it is a located near to the costal region. So it is a present near to the costal region. So that so is the unbranched and it is the convex sum. So convex, you can remember this point. It is the convex. Convex. So it is unbranched. So in case of ICR examination, so which one of the following part is unbranched? So they will ask the, like that only. So unbranched means costa. Unbranched and convex, you can remember this point. So it is a convex. Next one, concave. Subcosta is concave. Next radius convex. So like that only it will come on. So costa means convex. So like that only sub costa. So in case of sub costa, so which is a present in between the costa and radius. So which is a present in between the costa and radius. So sub costa at the end of at the end of sub costa, it is a bifurcated. So bifurcated. You can see here bifurcated. So next one, radial. So radial. So radial. So it is a present in between subcostal and the median. So radial, it is a present in the subcostal and the median. So these radial veins. So it consists of the second axillary sclerite. You can remember this point. We will discuss later. Second axillary sclerite, which is a present in the radial region. Radial region. So there are four types of axillary sclerites in there. So second axillary sclerite, which is connected to the radius. Radius. So these radius again divided into two types. Those are radial one and radial sector. So radial sector again divided into R2, R3, and R3 again divided into two types, R4 and R5. So we know these points very well. So no need to remember. No need to explain again. So next, in case of medianum. So in case of median. So small median sclerite, which is a present in the median. Just you can remember this point. Second axillary sclerite, which is a present in the radial region. So like that only in case of medial region, which is a present in median scleritum. So median scleritum, which is present in the media. So next to cubitus. Next to cubitus. So median axillary sclerites. So median axillary sclerites, which is a present in the cubitus. Median axillary sclerites, which is a present in the cubitus. Just you can remember this point only. So in case of radial second axillary sclerite, so in case of median, median cubital plate is there. Means a small median sclerite is there. So like that only in case of cubitus, so median, median axillary sclerite is there. Okay. So next, there are six types of cross veins is there. Cross veins it can interconnect the two longitudinal veins. So humeral cross veins is there. You can see here humeral cross veins. Is there. It means it can cross the costa and subcosta. So like that only radial cross veins is there. Sectorial cross veins is there. Sectorial in the sense within the radial sector. So like that only radial medial cross veins is there, which is a present in between radius and median. So like that only medial cross veins is there, which is a present in between the medial cross veins. So like that only medial cubital veins is there. So medial cubital veins is there. 
so which is present in between the median and cubitals okay you can see here costa which is unbranched and the convex one so sub costa it means which is a foco distally so that there are, there are two branches is there so those are sc1 and sc2 so which is a concave one so next a radial vein so which is a present in between sub costa and the median okay so second axillary sclerite you can remember this point second axillary sclerite which is a present in the radial vein so which is a divided into r1 and rs1 so r1 r1 is the convex rs is the concave concave so first it can start with convex so like that only you can remember next concave so next convex next concave okay so next medium so small median sclerite which is a present in the median which is a present in the median so which is a divided into two parts those are median anterior and median posterior median anterior so which is a convex median posterior is a concave so like that only cubitus so you can see here median axillary sclerite which is articulate with the cubitus okay next anal veins so in case of anal veins it will vary from 1 to 3 in number next modifications modifications so it's a very very important topic in case of icr examination so definitely they will ask bit from these type of modifications only just you can remember the examples so first one tegmina so tegmina means in case of grasshopper so in case of grasshopper as well as of cockroaches so only four wings so four wings they contain the tegmina so four wings of the grasshopper and cockroaches it looks like leathery it means it looks like leather some so four wings are leathery and tough so only four wings but hind wings are membranous so only four wings of cockroach and the grasshopper we want to call as a tegmina so like that only elytra elytra so which is a present in the beetles so only four wings but hind wings are membranous so elytra means it look like hard shield like them so without vein venation so the vein venation is absent in case of these elytra so they can form the horny sheet we know this point but in case of fine wings are membranous so only four wings are elytra so four wings of beetles we want to call as elytra so elytra is nothing but the wingum so like that only in case of bugs so four wings of bugs hemi elytra so it means half half is in elytra remaining half is membranous so only half part is elytra remaining of is membranous so in case of these hemi elytra embolium is there you can remember this point embolium which is present in the hemi elytra only arolium which is a different empodium is different embolium is different so which is a present in the wings so in case of membranous so like that only in case of membranous so both the wings of dragon flies bees and wasps So in case of fine wings of grasshoppers, beetles, cockroaches, so membranous wings is there. So best examples you can see here: dragonflies, dragonflies, damselflies. So you can see here: tegmina means tegmina. You can see here grasshoppers, the leathery look like leathery, only front wings come, but hind wings are membranous. So in case of beetles, elytra. So you can see here elytra type of wings is there. but hind wings are membranous so you can see here so some part it look like elytra and remaining part it look like membranous so clavus cuneus embolium which is present in these only so next scaly wings scaly means which is the present in the wings of butterflies and moths so scales them so it can give some color okay both the wings of moths and butterflies scaly wings is there just you can remember the examples so next fringed wings fringed them so which is the present in the thrips so fringed wings which are present in the wings so it means wings are usually reduced in size so wings are fringed so that's we want to call as a fringed wing reduced so wing margins are fringed with the long setae so long setae which is a present it look like feather am so feather like appearance so that's we want to call as a fringed wings next fishud wings in case of plume moth you can see here so front wings is divided into three parts 
hind wings is divided into two parts so totally five parts on so front wing it is divided into three parts so like that only hind wings which is divided into two parts so it's look like our hand so you can imagine our hand it's look like our hand am so that's why we want to call as a fissured wings so which is a present in both wings of plum moth so front wings as well as hind wings plum moth is there okay four wings which is divided into four like structures so it means it is divided into three times three parts so next halter so halter so halter is the pseudo halter is the halter pseudo halter so in case of halter so which is present in the house flies halter in the sense of true flies mosquitoes male scale insects also house fly halter is the halters which are present in the mosquitoes true flies and scale insects also so you can see here it consists of three parts those are scabellum pedicel and capital so which is divided into three regions those are scabellum pedicel and capital among so nix papillae or capital pedicel so in case of true flies so the hind wings so the hind wings which are modified into small knobbed vibrating organs we want to call as halters so only front wings is there So in case of hind wings, they can modify it into knob-like structures. So that's why we want to call as halters. So each halter is a slender, broad, club-like structure. So it's papillae. So which is divided into three parts. Those are cable, pedicel, and capital. So you can see here membranous, membranous, and scaly. You can see here scales. So if you touch these scales, so then you can get a moon color. Okay, butterfly scaly wings. the so fringed wings thrips in case of thrips fringed wings is there so next fissured wings which is a present in plum moth fissured wings so pseudo halters you can remember this point pseudo halters so which is present in stylopsis pseudo halters so in case of pseudo halters so four wings are modified so in case of halters hind wings you can see here so this is the halters so hind wings they can modified but in case of pseudo halters four wings are reduced them pseudo halters four wings are reduced hind wings are normal only but four wings are reduced but in case of halter four wings are normal hind wings are reduced to halters okay so you can see here some terminology so in case of cirpid family in case of cirpid so which is the it will come under dipterans so in case of dipterans three suborders is there So those are nematocerans, brachycerans, and cyclorophan. So in case of cyclorophan, this cirpida, it will come among. So in case of cyclorophan suborder, cirpida family will come. So in case of these cirpida, so spurious fins, we can remember this point. So which is the present in between the radius and median zone. So costa, subcosta, radial, median, cubital, channel. So these are the parts so in between the radial and median. So spurious fin, which is the present in the cirpid, so you can remember this point. So like that only in case of hemipterans, so cicada family is there. So cicada family is there. So in case of those cicada family, sambient fins, which is present in the cicada, sambient fins, which is the present in the cicada only. So like that only in case of hymenopterans, so parasites. So two families, some two families which are very very important families in case of hymenopterans. So those are ichthymonidae and brachyonidae. Brachyonidae, ichthymonidae. So in case of ichthymonidae, so two recurrent wind system. So it's a very very important bit. So I think in 2018 they asked for this type of bit. So two recurrent winds, which are present in the ichthymonidae. So if it is a one recurrent wind, so which is the which is a present in brachyonidae. So anyway, we will discuss later in taxonomy part. So we will discuss. this type of main features mean the characteristic features of families we will discuss in taxonomy part so next is chalcididem so like that only another family it will also come under order hymenopterans it is the one of the parasite family so chalcididem say so the wing venation which is reduced into the single anterior compound you know. so in case of chalcididem wing venation which is reduced so like that only trigramma you can remember this point tri means fusion of three amino so those are median cubitus cubitus 1a cubitus 1b so 
so cupitus is divided into two parts cu1 and cu2 so cupitus 1 and cupitus 2 so cupitus 1 is again divided into two parts those are cupitus 1a cupitus 1b so both are so cupitus 1a and cupitus 1b and median b so this fusion of these two wings they can modified into tri gamma tri gamma which is the characteristic branching of the lepidopteran sum so in case of lepidopteran lepidopteran tempus rib is there tempus rib so like that only tri gamma is there tri gamma so next one so this flighting so flighting it will mostly depend on bernoulli's principle only so bernoulli's principles of aerodynamics only so those muscles so which help in the movement of the wings so there are two types of muscles is there so those are direct muscles and indirect muscles so indirect muscles means the dorsal muscles ergo sternal muscles indirect muscles so direct means the sense auxiliary muscles you can remember this point auxiliary muscles basilar muscles and subalar muscles so auxiliary in the sense basilar and subalar so okay indirect means dorsal and ergo sternal muscles so direct means auxiliary muscles so these auxiliary muscles again divided into four types okay so basilar and subalar so rotation so sometimes the body movement it will rotate amma so about the long axis of the body we want to call as the rolling amma so sometimes wings so horizontal or transverse movement we want to call as a pitching amma so and vertical movement we want to call as having just you can remember this terminology so what is meant by rolling what is meant by pitching what is meant by having okay so in case of honey bees so hive bees means honey bees so in case of honey bees so they can fly 9 kilometers per 1 hour so can remember this point so in case of competitive exams like iri entrances so in case of for phd entrances they will ask this type of question so it is a very difficult so high bees they can fly up to 9 kilometers per 1 hour so for 1 hour they can travel up to 9 kilometers so in case of power flies from power flies so they can travel so these are the difference only hover flies so they can travel 12 kilometers per 1 hour so 12 kilometers per 1 hour so like that only half moth so it can travel so 17 kilometers per 1 hour so for 1 hour it can travel up to 17 kilometers but butterflies so butterflies they can travel up to 90 kilometers per 1 hour so high bees honey bees 9 kilometers per 1 hour hover flies 12 kilometers per 1 hour half moth 12 17 kilometers per 1 hour so butterflies 90 kilometers per hour okay so next wing coupling it's a very very important topic so only five types of wing couplings is there so those are amplexiform free net jugo free net jugate and hamlayer so amplexiform which is present in the butterflies just you can remember the examples samplexiform so i think in 2020 they asked this victim amplexiform type of wing coupling is present in the butterflies only samplexiform wing coupling means coupling them so both four wings and nine wings it can couple it can interconnect so you can see here coastal margin of the hind wings you can see here so coastal margin means this area so coastal margin of hind wings and analum okay and the anal margin of the four wings it can overlap so you can see here this is the coastal so it will not interact here so this is the apical it will not interact here only anal margin of the four wing like that only coastal margin of the hind wing so you can remember these two points you can see this picture so this is the four wing this is the hind wing so coastal apical anal only anal region so it is attached to the coastal margin of the hind wing so don't confuse okay next free net means it is a present in fruit sucking moth f f free net means fruit sucking moth so like that only jugo free net so which is the present in micopterans and neuropterans so scorpion flies so neuropterans means it will come under endo endotergotum so endotergotum neuropterans so next jugate so jugate means in case of tricopterans caddis flies so jugate apiad moth and tricopteran so which is a present um so next one hamlet type of wing coupling it's a very very important point so you can remember this point name first name h h means h hymenopterans 
Saimna pronouns means it will come under vas and bis only. So sometimes they will give these options only. Vas and honey bis. It will contain what type of thing complete. So hamulai hamulai means hamulai pronouns. Hamulai pronouns means vas and bis this term. So you can see here this is the hamulai type of thing complete. Okay. Next another some points. Teralia. What is meant by teralia? So it means it is a scalar item. So, which is present at the wing base for joining with the thorax. So, teralia means so humeral angle is there. So, with the help of humeral angle, it can attach just to the thorax regions. So, wing flexing mechanism, which is absent in the paleopteran orders. So, paleopteran orders means odonatum. So, femuropteran, mayflies, and odonata. Paleopteran. So, teralia means wing flexing mechanism, which is present in remaining orders except in Paleopteran orders from so femuropteran and odonata. So teralia is absent. So that's why wing flexing mechanism is absent. So in case of femuropteran and odonata, wing flexing wing flexing mechanism absent. Dragonflies, damselfly, femuropteran. Okay. So like that only humeral plate. So what is meant by humeral plate? So which is articulated with the base of the costa. So costa sub costa is there. That the base of costa humeral plate is there. Okay, so like that only first axillary, so which is articulated with the sub costa. So first axillary. So you can so you can remember this point: humeral plate, axillary, and median plate. So humeral plate means it can articulate with the costa. So axillary means three types or four types is there. So first axillary, so which is associated with sub costa. Second axillary, we already discussed this point. Radial. So second axillary, which is articulate with the radius. Okay. Next third axillary. So flexor muscles, some some muscles, so which are attached to the third axillary. Okay. So next fourth axillary, so which are well developed in orthopterans and hymenopterans. So orthopterans and hymenopterans, fourth axillary is there. So humeral plate. So teralia means wing flexing mechanism. So it consists of humeral plates. axillaries and median plates so humeral plates mean costa so axillary first axillary mean sub costa second mean the radius third mean flexor muscles so fourth mean which is well developed in orthopterans and hymenopterans so next median plates so last one median plates so it can articulate with median cubital wings median cubital wings so that's all about today's topic So different types of insect legs and their modifications, as well as different types of insect wings and their modifications. So if you have any doubt, you can ask me.